Hey everybody, this is Lorraine Ball and Jennifer Denny. And today we're going to talk about advertising, but a very specific part of advertising, like why you should always be advertising, right, Jen? It's, it's like washing your hands. You got to wash them all the time. You got to market all the time. <laughs> you know, and then, uh, okay, so I'm going to make the COVID uh, remark. We got into a situation where your hands looked perfectly clean and you were washing them anyway. And <laughs> that's kind of what you do with advertising. Yep. Yep. You know, I think sometimes there's uh, things that happen and maybe you have too much business and you're like, well, I don't need to advertise right now. I'm just going to cut that. So I think you've got a good story on that one. <laughs> so, yeah, um, this goes back to my corporate days. And one of the things that I learned is that say uh, sales lag behind your advertising. And so if you do a lot of advertising and you have great brand awareness, if you stop, the sales continue. And so then you get into this mindset of, oh, I don't need to advertise. And what you didn't realize was you actually were getting sales on the momentum of the ads that you had run. So like when I was in corporate, um, I was actually hired by Cary Corporation. They had come out of this period where they things had been great. Yeah. And they turned off their advertising. They actually went a step further and fired all their marketing people because the engineers were running the show. But OK, that's a different story. <laughs> but the point is that for the first couple of years, they didn't feel it. They didn't notice because they had great brand awareness. But then and that's a much slower sales process. But then it tanked. Yeah. The problem is that when you cut your advertising, you're still riding that that curve that curve but the advertising is gone and so eventually it's going to come down well then as it comes down you start advertising again yeah but it takes time to crawl back out of that hole now at, at carrier it took us about two years yeah um, yeah and you know, they're a long sales cycle though if you have a shorter sales cycle you're gonna feel that sooner mm -hmm. And so I always say, you know, even if like you have too much business and you feel like you shouldn't be doing that, now you get to pick and choose who mm -hmm. to take on and beggars don't have to be choosers. So mm -hmm. just another reason why you should keep marketing. Absolutely. And, you know, you can play with that a little bit um, in uh, television and old style TV marketing. And I, I still see this in, in Internet marketing as well. It's called flighting. Mm -hmm. And so. To get noticed, you have to, this is the noise level, wherever it is. This is the noise level. Yeah, yeah. And you have to advertise enough to get above the noise level. But and, it's, ex well, I was gonna say, it's, it's, and you have to control that noise. Mm -hmm. But you, but what happens is this is expensive to stay here all month long, to run mm -hmm. enough ads all month long. And yeah. so what flighting does is you go up for two weeks and then you go dark. And then you go up again. And so you use the same amount of money, but yep. instead of spreading it evenly all in, in a 30 day period, you buy, you know, you bump up. So you really break through. You just got to make sure that you're not flighting once every two months. <laughs> so you're changing your strategy based on the conditions and where you're at. You're not just completely stopping it. And that's a big difference. And I think the other message there is, the word message, if you're not marketing, you're not controlling the message or what people know about you, everybody else is, and you need to control that. And we, you know, we see our own ads, you know, when we start marketing, we're like, oh my God, everybody has just seen this and seen this. Yeah. In case you're curious, the rest of the world is not that interested in you, <laughs> you know, and so they really have to see it over and over and over again before yep. it really kind of breaks through their consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. You see that when people all of a sudden maybe think they need a rebrand and be like, well, you might be tired of your brand, but you know, everybody else is not necessarily uh, tired. I think there's, there's also a stigma that gets associated when somebody markets a lot and then all of a sudden they decide not to market you are infiltrating this, um, like, are they out of business? Mm -hmm. Like, are they not doing well? Like, and that's not a good thing either. No, because nobody, nobody wants to sign up with a company that, 
Well, yep. are they going to be around to finish my project? Whatever, you know, whether it's my bathroom remodel or my website, you know, yep. how stable are they? Yeah, I, I think you you need a constant kind of just drumbeat out there. You need you need to be out there. People need to be seeing you. Yep. And um, marketing and advertising is the cost of doing business. It, yep. it just is. Yeah, yeah. I think another fallacy that I hear a lot is that, um, you know, my my customers know me. So people that have repeat clients, mm -hmm. they'll come back. Yeah, they might, but, you know, they might forget your name. They might forget what you had. And so that top of mind awareness marketing that if you're not constantly doing it, they're, they're going to forget. <laughs> well, and um if you carry more than one product, if you have more than one service and, it, you know, I'll use the, the round peg as a great example. We were a web company, mm -hmm. but we also do content marketing. And I can't tell you how many clients we did a website for. Um, and if we had not been back in touch with them and back in touch with them and visibly connecting would never have known that we did email, that we did social media. Yeah. Um, and I know, I'm sure you get it. Most agencies do. You get someone who comes along and goes, yeah, that company did my website, but I, I don't want to use them again. Or I, I'm not sure if they're still in business. And Hello. Yeah. yeah. And so you kind of have to stay in front. And, and it can be different kinds of marketing for your existing customers. Yeah. Doesn't the smart consumer usually get one to three, mm -hmm. you know, bids just to hear what else is out there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, the other thing is um, I think, uh, you know, people say, oh, well, well, my customers. And my question is, uh, are you good with never having another new customer? <laughs> right you know? um, or even for that matter um getting your customers to refer you if yeah they see content from you that they can share that's a great way for them to refer you to somebody else and those are the best prospects yeah yeah i mean I, I heard all these kind of objections, you know, to stopping marketing. But the reality is, is if you stop marketing, it's like turning off your business. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have to constantly be marketing and making people aware of how you can help them and why you're the best. <laughs> you, you know, I go back to, I mean, you know, I, I, I've been in business for a while and I've been through a couple of recessions and I have seen every time as you're, as you're coming out of the recession, the companies that had maintained maybe not the giant ad budgets, but a little bit of presence, a little bit of presence, a little bit of presence, as the economy really comes back around, they're, they're ready. They're taking market share mm -hmm. from you that backed off. They're mm -hmm. taking your market share. And so you need to be prepared for those times that it's even more important to be communicating. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So we, uh, hopefully we've convinced you that you need to be thinking about a little bit of advertising all the time. And if you have questions about that, or you just want somebody else to run it, check out digital, uh, uh, check out Jennifer at elevated marketing dot solutions. Well, it just makes sense that you wanted to recommend the digital toolbox because, <laughs> some people, you know, it's a, you want to do it yourself. And so I think there is gobs and gobs of information in there on what you can do um, in order to market your business. Awesome. Well, guys, that's it for this week. We'll see you later. Take care. Bye now.